Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous mandibular canine. So this is a right deciduous mandibular canine and this is a left deciduous mandibular canine. So these deciduous canines, they are smaller in all dimensions as compared to the maxillary deciduous canines. These teeth, they perform tearing and uh, tearing function like the maxillary deciduous canines. So uh, these teeth, they emerge into the oral cavity around the age of 20 months and the root, it is completed around three years of age. These teeth, they are lost by the process of exfoliation. These teeth, they are lost by the process of exfoliation around the age of 9 to 10 years. And by that age, they are replaced by the permanent mandibular canines. So the crown and the root, they are shorter as compared to the maxillary deciduous canine. The cusp tip, this is a cusp tip and the cusp tip is more towards the mesial side. Due to this mesial shift of the cusp tip, the distal cuspal slope, this is the distal cuspal slope, it is larger as compared to the mesial cuspal slope. This raised area is the labial ridge and this labial ridge, it is not prominent if you compare it with the maxillary deciduous canine. The tooth, it has a single conical root. This tooth, it has a single conical root. And in some specimens, in the apical one-third portion, there is a curvature towards the distal side. In this model, this is the root, it is a single conical and it is straight. But in some specimen, there is a distal curvature. This is the cingulum. This convexity is a cingulum of the tooth. This is the mesial marginal ridge. And this is the distal marginal ridge. So the cingulum, mesial, and the distal marginal ridges, they are very less developed as compared to the maxillary deciduous canine. Similarly, there is a ridge in the center of the tooth which is known as the lingual ridge which is not very clearly visible in this model. This ridge, it is also less developed. The lingual fossae, they are very shallow. It means they are not very prominent uh, in, this, uh, in the mandibular deciduous canine. The crown and the root, they taper towards the lingual aspect. And because of this taper, you can see part of the mesial surface of the crown and the root and part of the distal surface of the crown and the root from the lingual aspect. This is the mesial aspect of the tooth and the labiolingual dimensions of the crown and the root it is less as compared to the maxillary deciduous canine. This convex portion and the label and the lingual aspect these are the cervical ridges. These cervical ridges they are also less prominent if you compare it with the maxillary canine. This is the mesial surface of the root and the mesial surface of the root, it is smooth. If you look at this tooth from the incisal aspect, the labiolingual dimensions is just slightly less as compared to the maxillary canine. This is the cusp tip of the tooth and the cusp tip, it is more towards the mesial side. The lingual surface of the crown, it is smooth because of the because the marginal ridges and, and the cingulum, they are not very well developed. So this is a brief description of the, of the deciduous mandibular canines. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Also feel free to check out the links in the description of this video. Again, thank you so much and stay blessed.